All right. Good morning, men. Welcome to another Man Up Monday. I'm so thankful to have all you guys here that come join us each and every week. Uh, I'm excited to get to bring the, the message this morning. Uh, so if you will, go ahead and bow your heads. I'm going to get started with some prayer, and then we're going to jump right into the Word this morning. Uh, Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, thank you for another opportunity to gather together with this amazing group of men, Father, and to break open your Word and start our week off correct. Uh, Lord, uh, so I ask that you hide me behind the cross, use this time to speak through me to these men, uh, the message that you've given me, and just allow it to grow us, develop us, so that we can be better warriors and uh, men of valor for you, Father. It's your name we pray. Amen. So as I was thinking about what I wanted to teach on this morning, uh, I, I really was thinking about kind of my journey uh, to be here on these Man Up Monday calls and um, honestly, a lot of the fear that comes from me teaching. Um, I, speaking is just not something that comes easy to me, not in this format. And um, so this morning I'm going to be coming out of the book of Exodus. I'm talking about our dear brother Moses. Um, so specifically, I'm going to be in Exodus 4, verses um, 10 through 12. Uh, it says, but Moses replied to the Lord, please, Lord, I have never been eloquent, either in the past or recently or since you have been speaking to your servant, because my mouth and my tongue are sluggish. The Lord said to him, who placed a mouth on humans? Who makes a person mute or deaf, seeing or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go. I will help you speak and I will teach you what to say. Uh, these verses have spoken to me for years and years and years. Um, I, I was a quiet guy all, all through school. I'm an extreme introvert. Uh, the idea of teaching on a call like this, um, the idea of joining Travis on a podcast and sharing that for men all over the world um, would have been absolutely terrifying to me as a, as a high school young man. Um, through my faith, though, God started to mold me. He started to uh, begin to use me and kind of take me out that, that introvert shell. And um, I began to trust him. And then um, over the last couple of years, God had really been calling me to step out of that shell even more so. Um, I'd been teaching lessons at my church uh, to young adults, to youth, um, those kind of things for years. Uh, those have been a comfort zone for me, those small group settings. But the idea of teaching men has always been something that um, scared me a little bit, I guess would be the, the correct words. Um, thinking that I didn't have enough, that I wasn't significant enough to have something to say, that I didn't have enough to bring. Um, and so it was a, a personal doubt. And I, I, learned, I was doubting God's ability to use me. And so when you read the story of Moses and Moses having his doubts, and God's like, shut up, Moses. I, I've got this. You just be obedient. And leaning on a, a, a very dear brother, uh, Mr. Floyd Ogle, has kind of been a mentor for me the last couple of years and really been hounding me to get out from behind that. Um, you can't do this Jordan mentality. Um, I finally decided to step out and mention to Eric that I had a calling to teach a breakout session at this past year's conference. Um, FYI to anyone, don't mention to Eric that you might have a calling from God to do something because uh, you're going to be doing it. Um, it wasn't a, hey, Jordan, I'll pray with you through this. It's, hey, Jordan, I'm signing you up. You're one of our breakout speakers now. And um, so since then, I've really been focusing my mentality on growing in that area, um, not for Jordan, not for any kind of glory that comes with it, but because I feel God has given me um, some words to say um, and to share. Um, obviously, being a part of the Men of Valor executive team, I have an absolute passion to see men be who God has called them to be. Um, I want to see men live out their calling. I want to see men grow uh, into their calling. Uh, but a lot of us struggle with that. And we struggle with the fear of rejection. We struggle with the fear of feeling like we are insignificant in God's plan. And I understand where, where that, what that struggle looks like. Um, and then there's another verse that I want to bring to you guys. Um, it's out of the book of John chapter 14, verse 26. It says, but the counselor the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have told you. So this verse hit home for me. Uh, I stumbled on it a couple of years ago. And when I was a young, um, young man, so in my early 20s, uh, I always struggled to retain the scriptures I was studying. I always struggled to 
um, pull out the information that I felt like I had, you know, I, I know I've read this somewhere, but I can't remember kind of the wording. I can't remember where it was at. Um, would struggle to find the correct words. Well, in my young 20s, I wasn't even saved. Uh, it wasn't until uh, July 9, 2017, as a 29-year-old, that I actually got that relationship right. Um, remember that Sunday very, very well. Uh, Eric brings it up a few times. It was a, uh, it was, it was that day that I finally got it right. It went from a head knowledge to a heart knowledge, and I actually got that relationship right. And it's amazing the difference once you've got the Holy Spirit as a part of you, your ability to retain and understand God's scriptures. The depth of His words becomes so much more. Uh, the the ability to pull scriptures out that you don't even realize you remember in conversations uh, becomes so much more real. And there's a different level of comfort that comes from having a conversation about who God is once you know who God is. Um, and so I began to have these conversations and realized that now God can speak through me because God is a part of me. It's no longer Jordan in his own power trying to bring messages. It's no longer me trying to remember these scriptures. It's the spirit speaking through me. And so I've, I've been working on learning to hide behind the cross and working on learning to uh, just be obedient at those callings. And I know a lot of us as men, we struggle with that. Um, I, I, as men, we want to go to work and do our jobs and take care of our household. But when it comes to doing our job that God has called us to, we're a lot more comfortable sitting on the sidelines. Um, I know if I asked all of you to raise your hands, how many of your churches have more women stepping up than men, probably be a lot of hands raised. Um, it's, it's an issue at our church, um, although we're starting to see a, a shift in that. Um, we've got a wonderful pastor in Eric that's really challenging men at our church um, every week, um, along with a couple other guys that are leading by example that are really pushing men. But it's, it's, it's an issue. Men are much more comfortable being on the sideline spiritually um, rather than stepping into their calling. And a lot of it's fear. A lot of it's um, a lack of understanding. Um, a lot of it's not truly trusting in God. Um, it's, it's hard for us to let go of stuff. I know for me, a long time, I was a control freak. I needed to have my hands on everything and I couldn't let go of stuff. If I couldn't wrap my hands around it and, and have control, it was tough to let go. And so trusting in God was, was letting go and, and trusting that he's going to guide me and not my own understanding. And so coming from Proverbs 3, this is verses 5 and 6, um, tells us to trust in the Lord with all your heart and not rely on your own understanding. In all your ways, know him and he will make your path straight. I've seen that play out in my life time and time again. I see when I trust him rather than myself, uh, my path, it, it straightens out a lot. When it's Jordan in control, when it's me trying to make the decisions, I get all kinds of lost. I'm off in the woods that I shouldn't be in. I'm off in this mess that I shouldn't be in. There's drama, there's struggles, there's uh, those kind of things. And so when we learn to trust God to lead our path, um, if he's planned it for us, then who can stop us from chasing it, right? So if we learn to let him guide, if we learn to let him lead, that path's going to be a lot easier. Is it going to be completely free of struggle? Is it going to be completely free of pains? No, it's not. Um, but I promise you in every instance, everything that you come into, there's going to be a way out. There's going to be a path through whatever struggle you're going through. You know, the book of James tells us that there's going to be struggles. The struggles are meant to make our faith complete. Those struggles are meant to make us grow. You know, God's not going to walk you into some sort of circumstance that he's not expecting you to have personal growth and come out the other side a more complete Christian. Um, as men, we should be looking for the hard things, you know, the hoodies. Men do hard things, right? Uh, Brian and I were talking about it yesterday in our Sunday school classes with the lead the young adults. Life's hard. Divorce is hard. Marriage is hard. Choose your heart. Debt is hard. Living debt-free is hard. Choose your heart. And as men, we've got to learn to do those hard things. We've got to learn to walk that path that Jesus has given us, regardless of what it looks like. We've got to learn to push aside our personal doubts. We have to learn to push aside our personal desires and truly pursue what God's called for our lives. Um, I know as many guys are on this call, there's probably several of you that have a calling on your life right now that you're running from. Um, or that you are refusing to step into because there's some fear there. Um, I know I struggled with it for a long time, um, doubting my personal abilities, but 
when we when we doubt our personal selves, then we're doubting what God can do through us. Uh, God is such an immense teacher. Um, he calls the, I mean, if you go and look at all the biblical heroes um, throughout, especially the Old Testament um, and the disciples, these men were not qualified Bible scholars that had doctorate degrees in scripture and were, you know, just prepared for that calling. They were gener generally unqualified men that God made qualified. Um, and so we've got to learn to trust in him. And so when I, when I think about um, all the different reasons why we doubt God, um, there's two really prominent ones that come to mind when I think about uh, why we struggle to trust him, rather. Um, first one being we are in such a rush to see the plans he has for us fulfilled that we grow impatient. Um, we are such a society of instant gratification that we struggle to trust God in the moment. You know, hey, God, I know you've called me to be a pastor, but you've not opened any doors for me to be a pastor. So I'm going to go pursue it myself. And we grow impatient and we start to doubt that God is actually in that calling. And now we either run from the calling or we try to force the calling ourselves. And when you try to force God's calling, you're going to find yourself in a mess. Uh, you're not going to uh, walk the path that he's called for you. You're not going to end up where he's, he's called you to. Uh, there may be some growing points that he needs you to sit under the tutelage of another pastor and learn what being a pastor really looks like. Um, it may be that there's a church he has planned for you to, to pastor, uh, but that's that church isn't ready to receive you yet. Um, you know, I know when for Eric, when he came to our church, if he'd have come two or three years before he got there, the church wouldn't have been ready to receive that fire breather himself. Um, we weren't ready for the challenge that he brings to our church, to be real honest. Uh, so if if that timing, had, you know, if he had tried to rush it, if he had tried to do something else, he could have messed up the plan that God had for him to come. Uh, and, and I've seen it time and time again. Uh, a lot of times when you force yourself into situations that God hadn't called you to, you end up burnt out. Um, you end up trying to force and work out of your own strength and out of your own power. It's not going to work. Unless you've got God behind you in those situations, you're going to burn yourself out. You're going to be frustrated. Uh, and then a lot of guys walk away. They walk away from the ministry. They walk away frustrated. Um, and then the other thing that I see um, – and this one, I think, is a is a prominent one, is guys failing to walk in their calling because, out of pure ignorance. If I asked you guys how many of you have read your scripture five days out of the last seven, there's probably a lot of guys on this call that would, would say, yes, I, I've read the scripture five of the last seven days. But if you walk into your local churches and ask that same question, I don't know that I'd really want to know the answer of how few within our congregation have actually opened God's word and read that five out of the last seven days. Not even every day, just five out of the last seven. Um, there is a extreme ignorance, and I don't mean that to be a derogatory term. I don't mean that to be um, a mean term. Um, ignorance is just not knowing, right? And I think there's a lot of ignorance and not knowing amongst our churches, amongst um, self-proclaimed Christians. I don't think there's near enough people who are taking the time to actually get into God's Word and study it. I think there's a lot of people that are, are reading a morning devotional. Um, they're reading uh, whatever the the Bible app tells you is the verse of the day, and they're thinking that's enough, and they're going on about their day, and they're refusing to dive into what God's actually got for them. I know I have struggled at times with my quiet time. I let my days get so busy and so packed full that I think I don't have time to dive into God's Word. And I'll tell you, I hate those days that I that I do that. Uh, there's a difference in the way I live my life when I do that. There's a difference in how I handle the circumstances that come at me um, on any given day or week when I'm failing to do that. And so I make time. Um, and there's so much depth to God's word. There's only so much that you can get attending church on a Wednesday night and a Sunday morning from God's word. You, I, I get way more out of my quiet times where I choose to dive into scriptures and allow God to speak to me specifically than I will ever get on a Sunday morning sitting in service. Um, for me personally, when I'm out on Sunday mornings, I'm focused on teaching my Sunday school class. And then when we get into service, I'm so focused on the sound system and getting it and making sure it's running and making sure the recordings are going so that all the people that join us live are going that um, 
I can't get the depth of what the message is a lot of times because I'm, I'm that's for me that is a servant position. I'm there to serve on Sunday. So if I was relying on a Sunday morning service to be my God for the week and my my dose of the scripture for the week, then I'm gonna be empty by the time by the time I walk out the doors most days. Um, and so there, there's a lot of guys that you're you're not stepping into your calling because you don't even know what your calling is. You've not dove into the scriptures enough. You've not dove into God's word enough to have any grasp of what God's calling you to. Uh, God's given us a lot of basic baby step instructions as Christians. The the ABCs of our faith, you know, what we're supposed to do. You, you get saved, well, here's step A, here's step B, here's step C. And a lot of us haven't even gotten to step C yet, and we're expecting God to give us a profound calling of our life. Yet you're not even doing the basics of your faith yet. You've not learned to to pray to him. You've not learned to have daily conversations with him. You've not learned to read the scriptures. You haven't witnessed to anybody in two and a half years, yet you want God to give you a profound calling into being a pastor or to leading some new ministry or you know whatever that looks like in your life. But you can't. He can't even trust us to do the baby stuff. And that's been me on a lot of times. Um, you know, I'm I'm thinking, you know, God, why haven't you? giving me a new opportunity to do this or to do that um, as I'm learning to step into my calling a little bit. And then God's like, well, when's the last time you took some time and, and actually prayed with me? When's the last time you took and did a, a deep Bible study with me and, and sought what that might, that next step might be, you know, God isn't for me, he's not audibly speaking to me. I, I'm not waking up in the morning and God's sitting there in the room and having a conversation with me. 90% of the times the conversations that I'm having with God is I'm opening his word and I'm allowing his word to be that voice that speaks into my life. Uh, we've done these things called D groups at our church uh, for the last five years, four years. And it amazes me when I get together with these four brothers, how we can all read the exact same scripture, the exact same verses, and all four of us get something completely different out of those verses. Um, and what's even more amazing is there, there'll be times where I'll read an entire chapter of something and I'll, and I'll be like, I got, I got nothing, absolutely nothing out of that. God didn't speak anything to me. I know what the scripture says, but I didn't get, and then, you know, my buddy Ray or my buddy Philip or one of these guys will be like, Hey, this is what God spoke to me. And I'm like, ah, that's exactly what I needed. That is what I have been looking for. And God just used you to speak that into my life. And so as men, we've got to um, quit being lazy with our faith. We've got to know that God has given us um, countless tools, uh, the scripture being the most powerful of those, that unless we're diving into those, we're going to continue to miss out on what God's got for us. Um, I know Hank and I talked about this a good bit. We got the privilege of driving up to the Men of Valor Conference this past year together, um, and I got to know Hank way better than I knew before, and uh, he's just become such an incredibly dear brother to me. Um, but he and I were both kind of talking about our struggles with trusting God with the calling that he's given us. Um, and Hank, I don't think would mind me sharing. He struggles with thinking that God's called him uh, to teach. And who's, anybody who's ever been under Hank's teaching and Hank's preaching knows that God has absolutely called Hank to do those things. Um, every time that I get to sit under his teachings, I get such a powerful um, uh, message from it. And I was a, a good kick in the teeth. And for him, if he wouldn't have trusted God, if he hadn't stepped into that, we'd all be missing out, right? Uh, but Hank's learned to, to dig into God and to trust God and is walking that path. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to trust that God has put me in this position, that God has called me to teach a man up Monday call, or God has called me to teach a breakout session um, or be on a podcast, which is, um, is crazy. But it's not about Jordan, right? It's about spreading the news that Jesus is king, and that we all need you. And so I challenge you guys as you're as we're starting SoulCon Day One. I know most of you guys are our SoulCon guys. Um, dig into it deep. Focus on every um, aspect of it. Um, don't miss out on anything. Uh, trust that God's got a message for you. That God is going to uh, walk you into a calling that may seem bigger than anything you've ever imagined. Um, if the calling God's got on your life doesn't scare you a little bit. I think you're probably looking in the wrong direction. Uh, God has such a big plan for men in this world, and he needs men to step up. So that is my challenge to you guys. Uh, dig in, dig deep, find what God's got for you, and uh, trust him to walk with you. Love you, man. Man, Jordan, 
awesome, awesome word this morning. Uh, and so I'm going to have to go back and listen to it again because you're talking so fast, which is usually what I do. So I kind of know how y'all feel now. Uh, I couldn't write them down fast enough to get it. But the one thing that you said, um, as as men, we should be looking for the hard. Uh, because as our church say, you know, men do hard things. We should be looking for it. Uh, but so many times, as Jordan said, men look to avoid it instead of looking toward it. And uh, man, what would have happened with David and Goliath if he would have ran from what he saw instead of seeing the hard thing? But knowing who was with him is what gave him the courage to run towards it. So, man, great, great word this morning, Jordan. Hey, guys, as always, uh, we've got a few minutes left. So, man, if God spoke something to you uh, that you'd like to share really quick this morning, just digitally raise that hand uh, by hitting that raise your hand button, and I'll uh, ask you to unmute and share. DJ Pitts, go ahead and unmute and share, brother. Hey, first of all, Jordan, great, uh, great uh message there one of the things that i got out of it is whenever you went to john 14 uh 14 and 26 and it kind of goes back to what was taught last year or last week about god teach me and it here it confirms teach again god teaches us what we need to know and where we need to go with in leading other people to jesus i needed that very powerful thank you awesome thanks for sharing dj uh, all right, let me see here. All right, so I don't see any other hands uh, raised up. So, hey, we, we don't want to keep you guys just to, just to keep you this morning. So we want to give you a few announcements, and then we'll be ready to roll this morning. So as Jordan said, hey, if you're not taking on the SOCON Challenge, today is day one of SOCON Challenge. Paul, we invite you to download the Gabor map if you haven't already, there's two things. Number one, you take the SOCON Challenge there. But number two, that's where our Men of Valor community is located as well. So you can go there, look for affiliated organizations, and you can look for our MOV Shield and join our community there where you can find out about all things MOV. So make sure you download that free download app at your Play Store, the Borum app, and uh, become part of this six-week challenge. Not too late to join, and also join our community there. Also, don't forget, man, last week, Travis and Jordan done an absolute excellent job with episode one of the Men of Valor podcast. Uh, we're planning on having that drop weekly. Uh, episode two has already been recorded and is already scheduled to drop this Thursday. So make sure, you know, whatever podcast platform, we are going to be on Apple. We're just, of course, waiting on them uh, to approve us. We did get approved over the weekend by Google. So uh, once you get that in your Play Store, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. We'd love if you to give us a rating there. That just helps us get in front of more people. But uh, don't forget to go ahead and set them reminders and the alarms to when it drops Thursday. That way you can be one of the first. And if you don't have it on those Play Stores, of course, you can go to movministries.org, and you can find it there as well with all the platforms that it's available. Uh, hey, if you're not following us, man, we have a pretty big social media following. And that's where we put a lot of content out. So if you're not following us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, we're in all those areas as well. And most time you can just search MOV Ministries and it should kind of pop up. Like I said, always look for the shield. That's why you know it's us. Uh, and you can follow us there. So, uh, man, I think that's all I had down. But, hey, make sure that you're following us on all those pages. We're planning on doing this. Hey, we ask you to follow us on those because that's just free advertising for Men of Valor when you go and share our content on your social media feed. And go ahead and give you a little preview. Um, in November the 1st, we're going to start releasing our content from our 2022 conference to the public. So we'll be releasing one to two uh, breakout sessions and main sessions all the way through the end of the year. So uh, we'll be releasing something. So man, we'll be throwing a lot of content at you, especially starting in November. You'll have uh, 2022 sessions being released we'll have our podcast being released man up monday being released uh man we're just pumped to see what god is doing and uh just as he continues to to grow us as a ministry uh we want to take everything that he's given us to help grow you as men to become more like jesus so uh man just so pumped hey i want to ask since travis travis watson's got his big fancy microphone there uh, if he'll speak into it and uh, share a little bit and then pray us out, that would be awesome. We love you guys and thankful for you being here this morning. 
Eric, you know how to get to a guy's heart, don't you? <laughs> Praying for you too, Eric. Obviously, you're a little under the weather still. There's been a lot of junk down here in the south, uh, probably everywhere else too. But praying you get better back to 100% strength. Hey, I love you guys. And uh, Jordan, thank you for that word this morning. So strong. I tell you, I feel like I say the same thing every time I hear you guys teach, but man, it gets better and better and better. That was exactly what I needed to hear this morning and uh, touch, touched on some things that hit my toes a little bit. So that's good. That's good. I'm thankful for your, your faithfulness to God. Uh, I'm just going to pray us out and uh, pray you guys have an amazing week and uh, that you just encourage one another and uh, get after it today. So let's do that. Let's close in, in a word of prayer. <clears throat> Jesus, you are king. We want to acknowledge that this morning as we wrap up our time together. Uh, there is no life apart from you. You are life. You are the bread of life. You are the living water. You are the great shepherd of our souls. And um, I pray that today we don't move without you. Uh, I'm thankful for the imagery and reminders out of John 10 that you are that great shepherd that just lays in front of the, the entrance to the fold to protect us from the wolves that are, are seeking to devour the sheep. And in that, we also have a responsibility. You tell us to be alert, um, that our enemy is constantly prowling. And so I pray as men, today we would live alert. We would live with our eyes wide open, fixed on the king and not on the troubles of this world. Uh, renew a fire in us, Father. I pray that you would uh, just stoke that flame again. I know we've been weeks removed now from the conference, and um, the tendency for us is to settle into routine, to settle into life, to settle into this world. And I pray that you would shake us so that we don't settle. I pray that you would uh, just fan that flame in our hearts so that. Uh, we would burn bright for you and that we would lean into you and lean into the, the trials and the temptations you've allowed to come before us so that through them we could be forged into men of valor. Uh, I love you and I'm so grateful for this ministry, for these men, that we get to be a part of it every day. And uh, I pray that uh, as Eric often challenges us to go light it up for the king, that that would be our focus today, that we would look to be men that burn bright for our King in a world full of darkness and hurt and brokenness and confusion. Um, may we hold up the truth and the source of all life, Jesus Christ himself. We love you. So thankful for this. We pray all this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit by whose power we live. Amen. Love you guys. Have a fantastic day and let's get after it today. Give it your best.